Are you ready? Good news, everyone. I'm the su surprise in your cereal box. I'm, I am, I'm great. Everybody else sucks. I said, are you ready? Yes, sir, random kid I just met. It's Jake C. Lee. Hooray, people are paying attention to me. That's right, you're always blaming me. So, my reputation exceeds me. It's time to check the league. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. You know what? You just made the list! It's all in football. Sure, we talk about it all the time. Really? No. Burn. What is up, you ducks? It is All In Football on FTN. If you want to go over to FTN, use code All In and you get 20% off. Yay! Uh, Breed it. How long has it been? Maybe two weeks since it's been redesigned for that fresh look that so fresh and so clean. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Yeah, roughly two yeah, weeks. It, it does look clean. Weeks. It's it. You know, if you're familiar with the site, it probably took you a few minutes to find where maybe your favorite tools or your favorite links were. Because I know it took me a little bit. But yeah, it's it's been a couple weeks now. We're uh, we're, we're so fresh and so clean, clean. Haven't found what I'm looking for. Is that, you getting a lot of those comments on your site? Uh, so yeah. we're going to continue yeah. to talk early, way early, ADP, rocket or docket on this show. Uh, wide receivers, and we're finally getting to the tight ends. We did touch on Kyle Pitts last week, but now we're also going to talk Dalton Kincaid, which, I mean, guess a good wide receiver tight end combination to talk about on a show, possibly. Mm. Uh, some little Chris Olave, even though we've been further down the list of ADP, but you'll see why in a second. But all that, a quick hit version of the show, because reminder... Uh, not only are we on Mondays and Wednesdays now, uh, myself and Lauren are on Mondays, us two, me and me on Wednesdays, right. as you can see, half hour shows, actually a little bit less if you want to consider what the actual time is, but because starting this Saturday, depending on where you listen to in your area, uh, the 8th <laughs> of July, we are going to be live on Sirius XM from 9 to 11 in the morning. Let's uh, you go. can also listen on demand. So, you know, download the app and all that kind of good stuff. But the FTN fantasy show starts this week. So we'll be up on Saturday mornings, bright and early, getting ready for everybody as draft season is start. It's what three ish weeks away, Beanie? Like a hey, yeah. We kick off with flex in New York. That's the kickoff to draft season. It's the very first weekend of August. So we're about three and a half weeks away. Yeah, we really are. It, it is draft season. I I dipped my toes in the uh, Sirius XM Invitational Independence Day Invitational. Uh, a couple days ago, but it is inching a little bit closer to draft season. Super jazzed uh, on the show, man. It's going to be so fun to do this. Uh, Sirius XM channel 87, as you mentioned, uh, every Saturday. So it should be every Saturday morning, right? 9 to 11, um, your time, which is 10 to 12 my time. But it should be fantastic. I mean, it's a great time. <laughs> nine to, nine <laughs> Eastern, we'll say Eastern. that. None of this my time. I'm in a made up time zone, but Eastern time zone. It's just super fun, you know, to, to we've been doing shows together for a long time. So looking forward to another chapter uh, for us and, and bringing in Lauren. It should be a whole lot of fun. It's a great time slot as well. Uh, it is. I feel like, Jake, once, you know, July 4th is over, it's kind of draft season. You know what I mean? It gets a little bit closer. Camps, camps are opening up reports. We're seeing reports. It's It feels like it's here. Uh, so, yes, um, just so you know as well, uh, the athletic, the dollar, you missed it. The dollar for 12 months. For a year, if you didn't sign up, I don't know what the hell you were doing. But if you did miss it, it's now two dollars. It's fifty cents a week. <laughs> they, this, that's what they changed it to. They changed it to fifty cents nice. a week, so they kept the offer going. But it's essentially two dollars a month instead of one dollar a month. You can go download the customizable projections over on the Athletic, which I give to you, and you can go through every single team and say, "I think you're dumb. This is where I'm smart, and you're not." And then you can see how the projections turn out. Like I had this interesting conversation with Bob Harris on football diehard show this past weekend. It was just the change of like, what if, like, what if I just changed 5% of the target share to this direction? Where does this player player land? So in that facet, let's kind of talk about what we've continued to be talking about is the ADPs of some teams now at wide receiver, because we went through some interesting ones, some early hype candidates, but the Panthers, DJ Moore is gone. Um, they have a brand new quarterback, rookie quarterback. Looks good. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could talk. We talked about him on the quarterback show, but who is he going to be throwing to the most? This is a whole mess of options. Uh, I don't want to call it a mess because that sounds disrespectful, but it's kind of like the Giants, where you know maybe we don't have anybody inside the top twenty-five, but there should be value here somewhere. Question mark. You have a vet. Yeah. 
who is reliant on the touchdown connection he had with Kirk Cousins that he doesn't have now. Like, we're assuming there should be some veteran ability to build a rapport with Bryce Young. But what if there's not? You have Adam Thielen. You have DJ Chark. He's been in and out, but productive at times. Terrace Marshall, there's a lot of people's favorite sleeper last year, who showed flashes but really hasn't yeah. put it all together. And then they drafted Jonathan Mingo, which everybody's like, ooh, he's going to be the guy because he's the shiny new toy, which we do every single year. So as of today, Meany, I'm not even talking ADP-wise. Let's just talk straight out of the gate. If you had to say who is going to be the number one fantasy wide receiver for the Panthers, who would it be? Or would it be Hayden Hurst? <laughs> Oh, geez. If it's Hayden Hurst, they're in trouble. Um, and I like Hayden Hurst, but Carolina would be in trouble, I think, if he was the leading guy. I think it's Thielen. I mean, I'd, I would just go with a veteran, you know, here in, in this offense. And I like some of their pieces. You said DJ Chark in and out. He really has been in and out. He, he hasn't shown us that he can stay, you know, healthy on the field. Really, in one team, he's bounced around a little bit as well. But I do like his upside. You know, I think he when. If all of these guys are healthy, he probably has the highest ceiling as the guy that's going to get targeted deep down the field, uh, maybe take some shots that way. But I think I think Thielen could be a, a safety valve for Bryce Young. I think that he's, still, he's been a really good you, – you mentioned the touchdowns. He's been a really good, consistent wide receiver that a lot of people overlook. They've overlooked over the past couple of years. But I, I for me, I'll lean with him. I, I think that this really – I know kind of veering off here, but I think this is going to be – a let's give the ball to Miles Sanders close to 20, 20 times a game and, and try to roll the offense through him. But if I'm picking one wide out, it's going to be field. Really? So my question for that is, is it more against Chark staying healthy, being a factor? Is it that Terrace Marshall, you've already soured on his prospects? Is it you just don't, don't believe in Jonathan Mingo as potentially like the rookie and coming in raw? And, you know, they – the one that stand out early because it's this time of year. Who's standing out in camp so far? And it was Jonathan Mingo, but also not everybody's playing in camp. Yeah, it should be Mingo. He should stand out. He's the young, fresh <laughs> wide receiver. Like, let's let's get these guys, uh, you know, let's see what they have to offer with some of these younger guys. But I, I don't have anything against Mingo. Uh, he wasn't my favorite, favorite wide receiver, uh, you know, out of the class. I would have liked to see them get somebody else. But, yeah, I just – I mean, let's be honest. None of these guys are really, I don't think, super strong targets. But when you do incorporate ADP, I mean, they're not going to really hurt you. They're in the middle to, to late rounds. If you don't get Thielen, take a shot on Mingo. Uh, for me, I have had uh, a little bit of share do so you, far in basketball. Do you have the ADP with, with pulled Mingo. up on FTN? What's that? The ADP? Do you have, I can pull it up. Yeah, on, on FTN. I was kind of curious who might be. I, I have a feeling a, that Mingo might it, be the first in ADP. It's been feeling, but it just depends really? on the draft. They're so they're so close together. Um, I'll pull it up here. I'll, I'll find it again. It takes me a little bit. These new tabs. Well, so let's make the argument for this then. So if you're talking about Terrace Marshall, Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, Jonathan Mingo, let's talk about it this way. So who's the most productive? But now let's ask the question: This, who has the potential to finish top twenty-five? Is it still Thielen for you? I think because so. do you, oh really? So because. My concern with Thielen, uh, with Bryce Young, is just that I think at this skill set of Adam Thielen's career that we're looking at a thousand yards, seven touchdowns to get there. Like, and it's not going to be—I'm talking like eighty receptions, a thousand yards. Like, it's not going to be a very high air yards. It's not going to be a very explosive Adam Thielen at this point. It's going to be touchdown reliant and stacking up a high level of receptions, maybe some big plays. But I think if anybody has the highest ceiling, obviously the biggest risk, it is Jonathan Mingo. But I don't love the fact that Jonathan Mingo is even costing more than like wide receiver. What is it? What is he right now on, on, on under? Yeah, so I found them and it is Mingo wide receiver 62 and it's Thielen wide receiver 64. Like these guys are just neck and neck. ADP See. 137, 141. So you really have to I can get behind that. Keep talking while I find yeah. out what the hell Barkley's getting herself into. Yeah, I could get behind it, too. I'd rather like some guys that are going ahead of him that I would, you know, pass on. For example, Zay Jones. I like Zay Jones. But what are we talking about him? Fourth, fifth option, potentially uh, in this Jags offense. Uh, Jacoby Myers could be OK. Darnell Mooney, Romeo Dubs, Michael Gallup, Rondell Moore. I'd rather take a shot on these Carolina guys and Mingo. In wait, wait, wait. Roll through those again. Start, start at the top again with those. And then because I want to so, say yeah. whether I would take Mingo or them. Zay Jones. Okay, depending on the day, it's probably Mingo, just because yeah, these Carolina guys have a shot to be the number one on yeah, their offense. Yeah. Like Zay yeah. Jones so is third, fourth. No, 
Um, Darnell Mooney. Mm, Mingo. Romeo Dubs. Ooh. I think it could be Dubs. Mingo. Dubs. No. no, look, look. It's not the whole, like, oh, if there's anybody that Jordan Love needs to turn to, it's Romeo Dubs. Is it Dubs? Yeah. I think it's Dobbs. Didn't he say it's Dobbs? It's not Dubs. Uh, yeah, it's whatever it might Dobbs, be. And then in four four years, he'll say it's That annoys me as much Dubs. as almost Barkley's annoying me right now. So <laughs> that's fair. Uh, look, look, I do believe the excitement and the fact that I'm the person who even said that if you look at the depth chart, Christian Watson definitively top two. Like he's going to be one or two with Jordan Love. But if, if it stays as it is and Robbie O'Dobbs is one and two with him, this is kind of similar to the Chris Godwin, Mike Evans for them. And the fact that Mike Evans, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 yards, six, seven, eight touchdowns, it's going to come on 50, 60 receptions. The person when needed and the person to turn to the most often and could put up similar yards and touchdowns depending on the volume. But the guy that is needed is kind of like that Chris Godwin. I think it could be Dobbs. Now, he could still get unseated. He still could lose his number two job because I still like the rookie. But – if you look at mm-hmm. it, I just, that's that's like I think Reed could unseat him, but I, I just feel like right now the Mingo needs to get past two to three people, and then Dobbs at worst case drops to three. Like that, that's kind yeah. of where I'm looking at it. I I could see that. I mean, both offenses are pro- will probably struggle. I I do like Jaden Reed too in the slot. One thing about Watson, I was looking into him a little bit more because I have him ranked I think higher than most people over at FTN is, and this is a very small sample where do you have but Watson? from. I got him like 18, 19. Um, okay. I think he's a really good target in the fifth round. If you can get him as your third wide receiver, I like my drafts that way. It's a small sample, but from week 10 to week 18 last season, he finished as wide receiver seven. And from a points per game standpoint, only three guys had more points than him. And it was like Devontae, Justin Jefferson, and I think maybe Tyree Kill. Now, he did have like a four-game stretch with seven touchdowns. All seven of his touchdowns came over a four-game stretch. Uh, And, you know, most of his passes came from Aaron Rodgers. There was a game against the Eagles where he took like a 68-yard, you know, crossing route to the house. But um, I think he is going to be the go-to guy. You know, Dubs could certainly – it could be really close. But Watson was a guy that at the start of the season – couldn't get on the field and those eight weeks to finish off the second half, we was living in the 80% snap range. And it was like dubs is a guy that couldn't stay on the field, but um, back to the board, like Michael Gallup, are we really doing this with Gallup? Can we just like, oh, let's take a Brandon Carolina Wilson. guy. Yeah. Let's take a care no. Rondell Moore. Like what's the ceiling for Rondell Moore? Is he going to have a bunch of games mm-hmm. where he catches eight passes might, for 45 minutes? He might minutes? even have Kyle Murray this year. By the way, I double checked that it's dubs. We're going to have to convert you. It is dubs. We're dubs. Okay. Dubs. Dubs. Just pretend it's dubs. just, just, just not just drafting re- him anyway. Just, pre- just re- <laughs> pretend he's Joshua's <laughs> brother. That, that should help. There you go. Joshua Dobbs. Joshua Dobbs and Romeo Dobbs. Spelled differently. Yeah. They're brothers. The Dobbs. The Dobbs boys. Long lost brothers. One, one grew up in uh, Canada. That's why he has the U in there. See what I did? <laughs> and one more guy on this list. Nico Collins. <laughs> Nico Collins. You know, oh, hold on. We're going to talk about Nico Collins here. We, we do need okay. to talk about that. But, but. I, again, to go back to it, I don't mind Mingo here. I go back to something, and this isn't be like, you know, go listen to the Series X, blah, blah, blah. But I just happened to be talking about it on the show on Saturday when I did the diehards, is that I like some of these guys right now, like Mingo. Um, when we see people in articles or even on the show, and they're like, it's way too early. Why are you even talking about this now? This is the early advantage of drafting. Like, if you draft early, you get ahead of everybody else talking about it, because by the third week of August, there's no sleepers left. Like you get into right. the seventh or eighth round and people are drafting because like, oh man, that was going to be my guy. I was waiting. I was hoping I could get him. And this is what I said. Um, we are going to talk about this on Saturday show. So you're going to hear me, hear me say this again on Saturday if you do listen. Is I hate when people get caught up in the offseason hype because we talk about it. Another show talks about it. Somebody else writes about it. You listen to somebody else's podcast and your buddy tells you about it. And I heard it on the po- this co- blah, blah, blah. And by the time August gets here, it's like, everybody's got to have Jonathan Mingo. And all of a sudden, Jonathan Mingo's going in the sixth round. I'm like, what are we yeah. doing? Like, And that's the problem. It's like, it goes back to my don't buy all the risk. It, it, but it's also don't get caught up in the hype where like you're like, oh, I got to have this guy. I got to have this guy. He's a great breakout candidate. He's a great breakout candidate and he's a great value where he's going. But once you start adding in the cost of now, it's like, okay, now Jonathan Mingo, to return value, has to have 900 yards and five touchdowns. Sure, he could still eclipse that. But now there's so little wiggle room to get an improvement. Like, don't get so attached to these guys that so many podcasts and sites are talking about that you you overdraft by rounds, plural. 
No, it's good advice. I mean, you, Clyde edwards Hilaire. When, Clyde edwards Hilaire. Oh, and he he pushed to the first Jordan round. Actually, Dan, there's there's so many guys that I can think of. I think of Amir Abdullah back in the day. Um, you know, we had that great <laughs> preseason game, and he just skyrocketed up draft boards. Even you can go back to Damian Pierce last year. This guy was this time last year we were talking about him being such a good value in the tenth and the eleventh round, and then all of a sudden Marlon yeah. Mack got cut, which we. I think most people expect we called on the show. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he moved to a fourth round pick. Now, even looking at his season, he did return some value in the fourth round, but you were drafting basically at his, at his peak performance. But yeah, all the, this is going to happen. Is Mingo going to be one of those guys? Like we should actually do an episode to predict where those like few guys, guys that are going to pop off. <laughs> In training camp, and they're just going to skyrocket up draft boards. Like one guy that's not a sleeper, and I don't want to get because I know we got an agenda here, is Javante Williams. Javante Williams a month ago was going 10th, 11th, 12th round. I bet you, man, when this guy is on the field, and he already has been on the field, he's going to jump up so high to a, a fourth, fifth round pick that it's going to be just crazy value for the first I don't know month of the summer where he where you got him in drafts. Where where you buy you buy all the risk that he starts off slow or even splits the entire year. Like that that's what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah. So, pretty much. All right. So here's an interesting one. We have what is argued to be the number one wide receiver in fantasy because he is the number one receiver in fantasy. I have if I'm drafting. I'm taking Cooper Cup first. Yes, there's a lot of risk. If you want to sit here and say. Uh, well, I would take Justin Jefferson for the safety and the close ceiling. Or if you want to make argument like that's, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're stupid not to kick. Cause cup doesn't only have his own injury to come back from. He's also relying on hopefully Stafford staying healthy for the entire year, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not talking Cooper cup. We're talking about who is behind Cooper cup. That's the problem because <laughs> Allen Robinson was a failed attempt. Uh, he is now the slot wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I think some people still keep. For oh, yeah, I forgot he's over there now. Yeah. Is You look at this depth chart. It's Van Jefferson, who's kind of like their Nico Collins who you brought up. Ben Skoranek, who at best probably a wide receiver four in the NFL. They drafted. Now, this is a sleeper I like in Puka Nakua and the fact mm -hmm. that I think he could be the number two. It's actually similar to Jaden Reed and not the – stylistically but that he could step into a number two role because there's a lot of questions in front of him uh like is there anybody here but i mean you can go down the list. i think they, they list demarcus robinson's on this team lance mccutcheon was exciting and last year remember last year's preseason last lance mccutcheon everybody's getting super excited about him oh yeah uh or what has been my argument that it's going to kind of be a cluster and the real number two is tyler higby like yeah. are there a wide receiver you want to make correct. a case for or is it just it's just tyler higby I like Nakua. I like taking a shot at him. For example, like that's that's a free shot. You know, wide receiver yeah. ninety three. I've done a several drafts where he doesn't even get taken, and sometimes he's only been taken because I take him. You know, in the last round, <laughs> we saw <laughs> this last year, right? Who's who could step up? I, it would be easier. It, so I guess it maybe is a little bit unfair to say we saw this last year when Cooper Cup went down. Who stepped up? Basically nobody. We saw moments from Van Jefferson and Tutu Atwell, but it was really Tyler Higby. There was multiple games where he was getting double digit targets. And that's great for a tight end. Maybe with Cooper Cup on the field, garnering all kinds of attention, you know, we could actually see a number two step up in this offense. But I don't believe in Van Jefferson. I don't think he's consistently going to get targets. He's going to get his deep deep shots. I don't believe in two, two at well. Higby's the number two. Is he going to get 70 balls again? Maybe not. You know, if Cooper cup plays healthy, probably not, but I would say, it's, Wait, it's won't? Hig no, I think he still will. Even with Cooper cup. Yeah. I mean, I, it's fair. I I'm thinking 65, so we can give him five more to get to the number, <laughs> but well, I think I'd say he's clear cut. Number two locked in a hundred. Locked in a hundred and locked in a hundred targets. Absolutely. So it's one and two. And then it is like, who's next and who's going to step up. And at that point, why don't you take a shot on the rookie Nakua, um, who is really basically free again, two, two out and Van Jefferson just don't move or Skronik. They just don't move the needle for me. Yeah. They look and worst case scenario. It's nobody. <laughs> it's like the giants last year. And then you just drop him because he's free. Uh, I mean, honestly, depending on your draft and who you're playing with and who you know, if you're in a 10 team, I doubt you even need to draft Nakua. Uh, but, you know, it depends. No, on you don't. Need to. Yeah. So one more because I do want to slide Kincaid in here real quick. Uh, actually, you know what? No, we'll save the Saints for another show.
because I want to make sure we get to this, the bills because Gabe Davis last year, talk about, there's a perfect example. Actually, you know what? I'm glad we brought him yeah. up. I'm going to have to bring him up on Saturday. Gabe Davis is the perfect example of the fantasy world going too bonkers over somebody and yeah. pushing his draft cost into basically unreachable return because it was, oh, Gabe Davis, look at all the touchdowns he's at. Gabe Davis is finally getting the opportunity. He's been freed. There's no more anybody in his contention to be the number two. He is the number two. And now he's going to catch 12 touchdowns and be amazing. And don't, yeah. don't be surprised if he finishes top 10 and all of a sudden people are taking Gabe Davis in the third round. Like that, you, yeah. you, People yeah. might sit here right now today, let me like July 5th, 2023, and be like, that eh, Gabe Davis. What? No, go look. His ADP was like the fourth round. Like People were yeah. reaching into the third round to get Gabe Davis. because he, he also he, had a fourth and, touchdown game, too, to wrap yeah. up his, his season. And the best bowl is like underdog, team stack. Well, I went and, you know, I grabbed Josh Allen earlier. I took Stefan Diggs. I'm going to double down. I'm going to take the three of them in the three of the first four or five rounds. So point being... We're now looking at this and saying everybody's cooled off on Gabe Davis. Everybody's been like, ah, he's back into the eighth round. Ah, he might even be like the clear number two because it might be Shakir or somebody else. And the somebody else people are bringing up, Manny, is the rookie Dalton Kincaid. I, yeah. I, I do not get this one. Do you know how infrequently a tight end finishes as not just fantasy? Like we could make the argument, Kelsey put him at wide receiver. He's still a top three wide receiver. Mark Andrews, the one year, he was number five at wide receiver, like all that. Do you know how infrequently, I don't even want to put Kincaid at wide receiver, how infrequently they finish as a tight end one? It barely ever happens. Before the last Pittsburgh Steeler, because it was Friermuth, like barely checked in there, like it was only like points per game, depending on your league or whatever it is. But the last one, like before him, was the uh, Heath Miller, which was like, yeah. what, oh my goodness. 15 years ago? Because like, it just <laughs> doesn't happen. Boy. Kyle yeah. Pitt or Kyle Pitts made the difference. Kyle Pitts is there. He had the thousand yards. So unless he's Kyle Pitts, I don't get the Kincaid excitement. Like, he's going to play wide receiver, meaning he's going to be lined up at wide receiver. Like that's great. He still needs to be on the field consistently, even as wide receiver, which he might not be out there consistently. If they're running 12, they're not taking Dawson Knox off the field because they right. also need Knox to block some and be like, well, yeah. well, Knox will be blocking. Okay. Kincaid still has to be on the field. He still has to be yeah. taking snaps. I don't get this. How is he going as a fringe tight end one in drafts? Explain it to me, I, I, I can't. I mean, you just you just rattled off all the questions that I have. And, uh, you know, I think their personnel is going to be a little bit different this year. But, yeah, Knox isn't going anywhere. He's a nice piece. He really is a nice piece for the future. And I think we'll be talking about him as a lock and loaded tight end one in the future. I don't know if it's going to be Maybe this year. There may be moments. It, it probably will be next year. There may be moments towards the end of this season if there's some injuries. It felt like a sneeze was coming on there. Um, but yeah, he's going ahead of our guy Oconco. Like, how is how like he's actually set up in Tennessee to potentially be the number one option at worst case, the number two option in this offense. So I think Buffalo was really starving for a, a number two option after Diggs. What I noticed last year in the second half of games is teams were really doubling and taking away Stefan Diggs. They needed a number two wide receiver. But for me to take this guy, Kincaid, 127 overall, tight end 11 ahead of Dulcich, ahead of Schultz, ahead of Komet, ahead of Oconco, ahead of Higby, of course, it's um, it's a, it's kind of a risky price uh, to pay. It's a really good offense. You're going to hear all kinds of reports. This is the guy that you're going to hear about when he's in shorts. Oh, my goodness. He's like Kelsey in the middle We're of the field. He can run closet. great routes. He's explosive <laughs> after the catch. Like You're going to hear all of that. He's a really good player. They took him at the end of the first round. They needed another pass catching weapon inside this offense. I think they got a good one. But yeah, from a redraft standpoint, he's an easy pass for me. And you mentioned Davis, so it's quickly. He actually finishes wide receiver 27. And what would be a poor year best ball? from in terms of <laughs> expectations. Now, yeah. Is that are you about to make no, a best ball argument I'm for me? I'm saying now it's like it's like stock market, highs and lows. Now nobody wants them, and we're getting them wide receiver 41, 42. It's actually not a bad price. Because if oh, he yeah, just did that, what he did last year, he's going to return value. And there is still a little bit of room to grow. Yeah. So uh, real quick, uh, Mr. Nice Guy throws out Todd Heap. I, I remember some Todd Heap. I, Todd I Heap, yeah. want to clarify a first round tight end to finish as a tight end one. There's been other tight ends that have sprinkled in there. Um, and then the other ones that have, have finished, it was of round ones to go back to Heath Miller. I think the only ones after that were Evan Ingram and Kyle Pitts. And Evan Ingram, let's not forget, the entire team was done at wide receiver. He Everybody in the their brother got hurt. 
Like yeah. he was, there was nobody left when Evan Ingram was out there. So if Stefan right. Diggs and Gabe Davis and everybody else falls apart for the Bills, sure, yay, let's go. Woo! It's true. It could like, happen. Kyle Pitts. But it would. Who else were they thrown to? Kyle Pitts had nobody else to throw to. Uh, before we get out of here, Chris, just uh, two questions. Uh, would you take Fields in the fourth? Too high, too low? Uh, I think it's, yeah. it's it's slightly high, but not too bad. Like, I would do it. I, I could I could see myself doing it. I have no issue. End of the fourth? Yeah, as long as those that first tier is gone and Lamar is gone, then I would, oh, I would yeah. could consider it. 100% Lamar over Justin Fields for yeah. that. Yeah, okay. And then before we get out of here, uh, the NBA rig is asking about Gabe Davis. I go, <laughs> sneak preview, pay attention to the article on The Athletic tomorrow. Oh. Well, depending on what you're listening to, breakout wide receivers. Uh, my boy, Jahan Dawson, tweeting about he's being upset about his attention and fantasy. Well, he hasn't been paying paid attention to this show of oh, us since last year. And uh, Dotson, including welcome if you, in. Yeah, yeah. I would go 100% Dots and Gabe Davis and Michael Gallup in that order. Same for you, Meanie? Yeah, same for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, And Michael I'm Gallup on, is a yeah. way, 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 way. Like, I'm not even drafting Michael Gallup. Not with Brandon Cooks nah, there. Me neither. Me neither. But hopefully what you are doing, following Chris Meanie at Chris Meanie, follow Stepmom Lauren at Stepmom Lauren, uh, code all in, get you 20% off at the uh, FTN, not at the Athletic. At the Athletic, you can get $2 <laughs> the, uh, a month. Yeah. yeah, $2 a month to sign up. You can download the projections, and you can play with it. You can be like, no. I think Gabe Davis completely falls off. I'm going to give Kincaid 20% of the target share. You could do it, and you can see where he's going to finish. But this Saturday starts the brand-new show, FTN Fantasy, on Sirius XM Channel 87. Do they still do the 210? Do they still do the other one? Is it still X, XM, this, Sirius, whatever? I don't know. We're definitely on 87. <laughs> Go listen, 9 a.m. Definitely on 87, yeah. Myself, Chris Meany, and Lauren uh, is going to be the FTN Fantasy Show. We'll be back on Monday with myself and Lauren. Good times. Great taste. See you later. Peace. Eat more hot dogs.